Hey, we're back again with uh, um, devotions by Danny. The title is Looking into Jesus, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 2. We uh, left off uh, right at the middle of that. Let me go ahead and read you, and then we'll start in with verse 2. Chapters 12 of Hebrews, verse 1, said, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses, that let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2 then, For today, looking into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. When we look at verse 2 then, looking to Jesus, I want to begin Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. It says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Jesus, who was the Word, who became flesh and dwelt among us, full in grace and truth, the one who we share our allegiance to, our Savior, our closest friend, looking to Jesus, who indeed says, the author and finisher of our faith. He is the one who began it, he is the one who will perfect it. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6 says, Being confident of this one thing, he who began a good work in you, will perform it into the day of Jesus Christ. We said earlier, this race that is set before you, that God has ordained, that we walk in. And so we have Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith, the one who begin it, the one who will perfect it, the one indeed who will finish it. He endured the cross. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10 would read this way. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons into glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. He endured the cross. This gospel that we talk about in this preaching of the good news, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But to us which are saved, it is the power of God. Jesus, who endured the cross, despising that shame, who did it so that you and I could become children of God. Remember 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He became sin for us who knew no sin, so that we might be made the rights of God in Christ Jesus. Not of good works, so we can't boast, but by grace we're saved. And the one who began that work is the same one that's there with us to help us to to complete it. He is at the right hand, as it says here, set down at the throne of God. What a blessing. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 tells us all the way through that. Who being the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person, upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had had by Himself, He purged our sins, sat down at the right hand, of the majesty on high. It's another verse that teaches us, and let me go ahead and find it and read that to you. My little children, these things I write to you that you sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the appropriation for our sins, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. The one who satisfied the Father's wrath of sin who became sin for us so that we could have this right relationship with the Father. And so he endured the cross, despised in shame, sat down there at the right hand of the Father. I want you to look at one other passage as we uh, close for this section. John chapter 19, when Christ was on the cross, it says, therefore, in verse 30, that Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, said, it is finished and he bowed his head, and he gave up the ghost. That word, it is finished, had at least in the grief, that, that paid on account, that 
because of the wage of sin is death, our sins, that Christ died for that. That was the race that was set before Him, and He did it to fulfill first the will of the Father, but secondly, so that you and I could be in this right relationship with Him, the relationship that we're to seek first of His kingdom and His right way of doing things. Because we are His child because of what He has done. And so may you look to Jesus, knowing that He who began that good work in you will complete it. He didn't leave you alone. We've said before in some of our other devotions that when you keep His commandments and His sayings, that He promised to be with you, to make His abode with you, to abide with you. That means never to leave nor depart. So my friend, count your blessings, that God loves you enough that He sent you Jesus, that you need to keep looking to Him to keep His words, His sayings, obey them, follow them, have that relationship that God intended for you to have, and be blessed, knowing that you're in a right relationship, all because of what Jesus did and still doing in your life. And may you count your blessings every day and tell others the good news of how much God loves them because He loved you in spite of you and how blessed you are. In Jesus' name, amen.